Valve is planning a really big update for Dota 2 in mid-April called Crownfall. Many people had already hoped for and expected it earlier, but we're not getting it just yet. In the meantime though, there is another change coming to Dota 2 via a new function called uh, matchmaking features, the matchmaking hero ban rework, and the Dota Plus pre-match matchmaker analytics. I've seen a few Reddit posts about this, but I haven't read this blog post yet, so let's look at it together and see what they are planning to do with Dota 2. We've just released gameplay patch 735, took a little look at it. It is a relatively unexciting slew of changes, but that are, are very good and topical in my opinion. Important item nerfs and hero nerfs and buffs I, that I feel like were really reasonable when I looked at many of them, including the Revenant Brooch nerf, the Rapier change for skill expression, and also some nerfs on popular items and heroes that we saw a little bit too much of recently. But let's look at the rest. Over the last year or so, we've taken a number of visible actions against users of third-party cheats. As we investigate each cheat, we're primarily focused on understanding what they're doing and how we can track it and stop it. But while we're doing that, we also ask ourselves why some cheaters feel compelled to use these tools in the first place. The most common explanation is to get an unfair advantage, which obviously runs counter to the desires of the Dota community and the sense of competitiveness and fairness at its heart. Even so, Sometimes there are still things we can learn and use to improve the Dota experience for everyone, or at least everyone who hasn't been banned for cheating. <laughs> I don't think everyone wants this. I want this, a sense of competitiveness and fairness. I also want a humble teammate and a humble self, myself too, I'm not perfect, that focuses on fun, improvement and cooperation. I don't want unfair advantages for anybody, but some people are completely fine with that, which is why they will snipe stream and then watch minimap and see everything you're doing <laughs> or install some of these apps. Some people just want their MMR to go up, but okay, let's say ideally it should be like this. Pre-game hero bans are an example of this. Many cheats last year focused on gaining an advantage during the 10 second hero ban phase at the start of each game. We stepped back and looked at the original goals of this phase, which was allowing players to express a preference for what heroes they didn't want to play against, but without creating scenarios where players with small hero pools would get permanently locked out. Looking at some data, we asked if there was a way we could better serve these goals while solving other problems at the same time. So the way that I did this is I just made a list of the three highest win rate heroes that I personally don't play or don't want to play against. And then I just banned one of those. So it could be like some of the heroes that take over the entire identity of a game, such as Arc Warden or Tinker, or it could be uh, a very high performance hero that just has the best late game, like Faceless. And why would I ban the best late game hero? Because it could be on my team, right? But the chances are it's also on the other team. I didn't want to be up against a hero that if my team doesn't make a move, doesn't go for early win conditions, uses early game tempo advantage, that we just end up hurtling towards a defeat. And of course, in pups, oftentimes it is unfocused like that, where people don't have a consummate uh, desire to work together to do like an early timing. Like I could go Chen against Faceless Void, and then I know that we should win in 20 to 25 minutes, whereas the Faceless Void team wants to win in 30 to 60 minutes. So you wanna go and push, you buy your aura items, but then people are just AFK and don't wanna push. And then, you know, everyone has their own win condition ideas and that's why I ban heroes like Faceless. All right, let's see what they're gonna do about this. How are they gonna change the ban system? Because right now, 10 players get one ban each, at least in the rank that I played, and there's a 50% chance of the ban working. So you cannot always ban out a one trick, even if you know someone only has one hero. With today's update, we've removed the start of match ban phase and replaced it with ban preferences that are stored with your account. Wow. If you load the heroes tab, you can select the four heroes you don't want to see in your games. You're guaranteed when you join a matchmaking game that at least one of them will be banned. <laughs> you can change your list of banned heroes whenever you want. If you leave some banned slots empty, it's possible the empty slot will be selected as your banned hero. In other words, there's no advantage to leaving slots empty. Wow. Hmm. The new system addresses a number of problems the previous system had. You can't forget to ban. True. 
that happens sometimes because 10 seconds is quite fast you don't have to learn that sometimes suggested bans are ignored by the game yeah yeah because you'll ban tinker and then tinker is available anyway and then you get this immediate frustration feedback loop where you ban something and it didn't work it's like it didn't make you're not on a tight clock to make a stressful decision that in the end most players make the same way almost all the time i guess their telemetry showed this and it's kind of true in any given patch duration i always just ban the same hero in theory i should be thinking maybe i want to play phantom lancer this game so i'm gonna ban earthshaker oh this game i want to go pa so i'm gonna ban od but actually that mostly doesn't happen because when you start drafting you don't know where the draft is gonna head yet so you don't know what you're gonna pick yet at least i think so as an added bonus it also makes targeted bans impossible all oh, right the overwolf stuff where people use the third party app to ban out one tricks that they've identified with third party software is on the enemy team whether those bans are against known personalities or random players in a pub match for which you've looked up data true that no oh. no more hoodwink bans warlock and hoodwink ban it's pretty nice interesting yeah, it's smart some game modes like captain's mode captain's draft ability draft turbo either didn't have a pre-game ban phase or already had non-standard ban rules these modes remain unchanged pretty nice but there is a downside too you have four ban slots you put tinker arc warden Meepo and Faceless. Now, one of them will be banned. That's a 25% chance. Before, if you click ban Tinker every game, 50% ban. So technically, you could be seeing twice as much of your least favorite hero as normally. That's the downside. Are you saying they should limit it to two slots? Yeah, I think so. Well, 50? No, n now that... It one in four times on, on statistically your ban will go through and before it was one in two so it's twice as much you can only choose you can choose to ban only one if you want yeah but it'll select between empty slot empty slot empty slot and your one ban wait are you gonna be a dota enjoyer again i'm already a dota enjoyer relic i'm not an enjoyer of do some dota teammates millions of dota players interact with the matchmaker every day and every single one has different priorities when looking for a game. Some prefer to get into a match as quickly as possible and are willing to accept a higher skill variance in the game to save some time. Others want every match to be perfectly balanced and are willing to wait longer for the best chance at the closest game. Other players care less about the skill level of other players and much more about their personality and behavior in game. Yeah, this is me. I don't mind as much and I know that I'm different than many. I prefer to play with a 5.5k MMR player that has a positive mindset, wants to win, than with a 6.5k MMR player that will berate everyone on the team. Because you, I don't want you to win, but I want to win with the 5.5k. And I know there's people, maybe even a lot, I don't know the percentage, of 6k MMR players that would prefer to have a full team of 6.5k MMR players that waterboard them and abuse them and berate them and belittle and and <laughs> just everything like a like a the worst hazing ritual you've ever seen so long as they're getting carried by 500 mmr more we've long wanted to build features to let players find matches that better align with their individual preferences early attempts ran into two main problems first while players are good at describing their preferences to other people, they aren't necessarily good at describing their preferences as inputs to a complex global matchmaking algorithm. I value skill variance 13% higher than the average Dota player. <laughs> yeah. How can we create tools that lets players express their preferences naturally and directly? You know what I keep thinking when I see this stuff? There's no way Valve is doing this just for Dota 2. I could be wrong, but that's just what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they're improving Dota 2, but they're also building a framework for all matchmaking, for all future games they're playing, for, uh, for all future games they're planning to release, if any. And maybe even, they could even make it into a package that they sell to Steam work, like to any Steam game. 
Like, look, we have a working set of circumstances for online matchmaking. They could solve matchmaking forever. Forever. MMR matchmaking as a service export product. So Dota is their lab rat? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. That Dota is their, their lab rat. Yes. Valve releasing another game with matchmaking? No, I don't think so. I, I think so. Second. Changes to the matchmaker affect all Dota players, so we tend toward caution. The matchmaker is always trying to strike a balance between individual player preferences and the health of Dota as a whole. Really? I thought the matchmaker was always trying to strike a balance between heart-stucking, undeserving, low-ranked players that are actually better and putting people that are on a win streak with a bunch of griefers on their team in order to keep them down and force 50 unfairly. I thought that's what the actual algorithm was doing. It is known. If matches of Dota are bad, whether because of wild skill gaps or poor player behavior, that's bad for Dota as a community. If every match is perfect but takes three hours to form, that's bad too. New matchmaker features available to everyone at once risk breaking the matchmaker. And if we break it, we break Dota. How can we ship new matchmaking features and learn how they work in practice while keeping risk to Dota as a whole low. I still find it so refreshing how Valve talks to us. It's quite in depth. What's this? Your game is ready. I think I saw this screenshot on Reddit. Your game is ready, except overall match quality is good. Skill balance, perfect. Will people believe this? <sighs> I don't think people will believe this. I have done some of the most public bronze to grandmaster in Dota 2 ever. Everything is on display. I was in a glass box like the True Man show and I showed everything. I metaphorically took off my clothes and you could examine everything from every angle and every hole. And yet people still do not believe that I reached my MMR legitimately. They believe in shadow councils and deep state valve algorithms. They believe in Swedish boosters. It's all on YouTube and on OnlyFans, yes. Why would they not believe me who documented over two and a half thousand hours of organic climbing of MMR in Dota 2, but they would believe valve with one screenshot. If you read this, I'll sub. Thanks, KV. Uh, skill range, all players moderate, your party, close. Behavior, all players, uh, all players, hey, you did it, the madman. All players, great, your party, ideal. I mean, are there just a bunch of positive buzzwords? <laughs> Overall match quality is good. Valve can do, no wrong. Skill balance, perfect. Your chance to win, good, if you do your best. Your skill, very admirable. Enemy, same. Behavior, great. You're very, you're doing very well. I'm very proud of you. All match conditions, ideal. Want to play or not? No. <laughs> Next screen. Skill balance, poor. Your party is favorite. Your party's behavior, good. Enemy party behavior, very bad. Infighting likely. Accept match? Yes! Accept! Accept! Decline this match without penalty and queue again. Dota plus Dota Labs. I don't know, I need to read what they're going to say about this, because I, I don't see this working yet. Within the new experimental umbrella of Dota Labs, and initially limited to Dota Plus, we're shipping a first pass of a feature that Dota players have been asking us forever. When you find a match in Dota, that Plus will present some information about how the matchmaker evaluated the match, like an estimate of skill range and player behavior scores. You'll have a chance to accept that match or requeue to wait for a match that's better for you and your current preferences. We were careful when building this feature to make sure any information we included would enable players to express individual preferences about what kinds of matches they prefer. Oh, but not grant a competitive advantage of any kind. The new dialogue can tell you that the skill variance of players in a match is high or low, but not whether you and your team are on the high or the low end. <laughs> Why is this a Dota Labs feature? Because we want to know for sure how millions of Dota players are going to be interacting with a feature before we ship it. We've done extensive modeling, but there's still real risk here. We may be wrong about how players will use this feature or how it will affect the overall matchmaking experience in Dota. 
We don't want to let those fears that we might be wrong stop us from doing something that may benefit millions. So we're shipping it as an experiment. Shipping it inside Dota Plus limits access and boosts Dota Plus sales and accordingly limits the risk to Dota as we learn about how everyone interacts with it. As with the other Dota Labs features, time uh, features time and your feedback will tell whether it grows, changes or gets retired. Onward, Crownfall is coming mid-April. Okay. Uh, so uh, the thing that I'm not seeing here is how you express your preferences. So I'm going to uh, have a coffee with my ex. Just a coffee, nothing else. No friends with benefits or anything like that. Certainly no emotional entanglement. Just gonna have a coffee with my ex. And I'm gonna boot Dota 2 and I'm gonna check out the uh, Dota Labs feature. It's Hero bans have changed. Set heroes to ban. This is how it looks like. There we go. Meep. Oh, come on. <laughs> It's funny, they have sounds. Uh, and a baton. I want to hear Meepo again. Oh, come, on. <laughs> come on. Cool. So it's going to ban one of these four. Interesting. And then the Dota Labs feature. Where is it? Show match evaluation details. Okay, I have Dota Plus still. I can test this out. I can queue up for a game without... Uh... And is this everywhere? I can just quit. This feature displays information from the matchmaker when you accept a match and allows you to decline with no penalty. Yeah, I can just queue up and quit. Nope, Immortal Draft doesn't work. Oh, what about Unranked? You sure Immortal Draft doesn't work? <laughs> unranked, okay. It says so under labs, okay. It applies to all matchmade games except Immortal Draft. But I'm not in Immortal Draft. I'm immortal non-draft. Draft starts at six and a half. So I could do it for uh, ranked as well. Oh yeah, you are too low. Oh my God, the toxicity is back again, Moonyak. You're the reason I quit. You're too low. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I love you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still, I'm still a little oversensitive. That was, uh, that was an overreaction. I need more time. Muerta and then punch five. Huh? Ah! Oh, someone else quit. Oh, okay. So we're going to see a lot more of this. Oh, I see a big downside already. Hey, what if I don't turn on this labs feature? Can this happen to me? That people quit because someone else uses it? It went so fast. I didn't even screenshot it. Yeah, I saw someone say on Reddit. He had eight Q pops in a row to find a game. This is not really a good thing for streamers and streamer entertainment that every time you find a game it cancels because it becomes a talking point right and it becomes like fake hype every time screenshot everything is perfect everything is perfect and then you cancel all right, so that's how it is then. It doesn't say cancel queue, it goes um, queue again. And the queue again button is weirdly grayed out. So let's see what I just got. Overall match quality is ideal. Skill balance is perfect. Skill range is very close. It's Europe West. Player behavior, all great. From the looks of it, I could have clicked accept here and get back into Dota 2 in the best way possible. There's no chance that anyone here would be toxic. It would just be five motivated individuals working together to try and win the game. And if it doesn't work, GGGLHF next game. Very interesting feature. I'll be curious. I'll be watching some streams to see how this goes. I hope you enjoyed the little look at the uh, new news for Dota 2. I'll be keeping my eyes on the game and the developments.